Oftentimes when we think about our faith, we don't think about our relationship with Jesus. And instead, we think about our religion, which leads us to think about all of the rules we need to follow to be a Christian, right? Rules like no swearing or watching rated R movies, no, uh, you know, wearing two-piece swimsuits, no drinking or drugs or having sex before marriage. These are all the rules that we are told by our Christian culture and even times by the church. So right now, I want you to grab a piece of paper or open up your phone and wherever you're at, I want you to write down the rules that you have been told, no matter how bizarre, like not watching TV on Sundays or to serious stuff, like not taking medication for anxiety and depression. Write down the rules you have been told to follow because you're supposed to be a Christian that you've been told by the Christian church. So hit pause right now and write down those rules and then jump back in here with me. Thanks for taking the time to write out those rules that you've experienced within our Christian culture. I know for some of us, the rules are maybe hard to share. They can feel shameful and condoning, critical. They've made us feel excluded from our Christian culture. And I'm sorry. I know as a Christian and, and as a pastor, I have failed at times to lead people in their relationship with Jesus. I have instead turned their faith into a set of rules that they need to follow. And I'm sorry if this has ever been a rule that you've heard here at Central that made you feel ashamed or cast out, that you couldn't be part of our family, that we don't love you or value you, that we didn't see you for who you are. These rules we have as a Christian culture and community and in church are painful. They're unhelpful, damaging, wrong. And I have, I've felt this pain right alongside you. You see, as a female, one of the things that I've had to work through and pray through uh, as a Christian was learning how to dress as a Christian. Like all of you ladies get me, right? So I became a Christian at 19 and um, a little later than many of you in this room, but I had already kind of had this understanding of what I wore. And when I was accepted into the Christian community where my opinions and decisions for how you can dress were no longer acceptable, I had to get rid of my two-piece swimsuits, my tank tops, my short shorts. And I remember being told if you want to be a Christian, this is what you have to do. This is how you have to dress. This is the rule. And I love rules. Man, any pastor on our team can tell you that I love a good rule book or handbook. And as a matter of fact, I rewrote the handbook for CSM this past summer for fun. You give me the directions and we will follow them forever and ever. I love rules. Black and white, right and wrong. Give me the rules. But there's something messy here, you guys. When, when we make our faith a set of rules? You see, when I decided to follow Jesus, I was told, come as you are. Jesus accepts everyone, no matter what mess or brokenness that you have gone through. Jesus loves you and you belong here. And now that you belong here, there's a big set of rules. For a long time for me, following Jesus meant following the rules. I dated this guy in college off and on for a few years and, and to be a good Christian in 2009, it meant not kissing someone while you're dating. You had to wait until you were married. And so I did this guy forever and I never kissed him because when you're a Christian, that's what you're supposed to do to follow the rules of being a good Christian. Before I was a Christian, I used to drink alcohol underage and actually, I actually got into quite a bit of trouble in high school for it. But after I became a Christian, uh, I didn't drink alcohol at all for years because that's what you're supposed to do to follow the rules of being a Christian. When I was 23, I was struggling with suicidal ideation and depression. And I remember my counselor asking if I wanted to see a doctor to look at maybe going on some medication to help me out in that situation. But I said, no, I could pray and read my Bible because that's what you're supposed to do to follow the rules of being a Christian. Because that's what you are supposed to do to follow the rules of being a Christian. But what if our faith is not about following the rules? What if we didn't read and interpret the Bible as rules, but as a relationship? How would your faith look different if you were driven by a relationship with Jesus rather than rules from the church? What if our faith was about transformation and not transaction? Today, I want us to lean into how these rules are, are not God's heart for how he has called us to live. We're going to tackle Philippians 3 and we're going to, so go ahead and get your Bibles open to that passage. 
we're gonna be starting in the beginning of the passage and what we're going to see is how uh, Paul lists and writes out all of the rules he has followed as a Jewish man uh, that have made him righteous. And you'll see here he refers to this family, his heritage, and how that have made him special. He refers to these rules as the flesh, meaning the things that he has done. So all of the things are about Paul uh, being seen as righteous or good. So read with me here in verse three, and I'm gonna go slowly through this passage with you. For it is we who are the circumcision. So Paul means people who were of the Jewish faith. So uh, this is the same religion that Jesus would have been born into uh, and that Christianity comes out of. Remember, this is the early church that Paul is writing to. Circumcision was a sign of the Abrahamic covenant with God. So again, he's basically saying, for it is we who are Jewish, ready? We who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, flesh meaning rules or things he has done as a religious man, though I myself have reason for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, a regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on law, faultless. So Paul writes, he is the best of the best in the religion. He followed all the rules. He's done everything right. He comes from one of the best families. And maybe that's you. You come to church every Sunday or you're watching online every week and you serve or, uh, on the worship team at the church or you serve in children's. You post all the right Bible verses on your Instagram. You don't drink, you don't do drugs, you're not having sex before marriage and your parents pray with you every single night before you go to bed. Uh, you have got it all together on the outside. You are the best of the best when it comes to being a Christian in our religion. But it doesn't matter. You see, that's not what following Jesus is about. It's not about following the rules of the religion, but the heart behind it. Keep reading with me here, verse seven. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider for the loss for the sake of Christ. He's saying whatever rules uh, that he followed are now considered nothing because he knows Jesus. Okay, verse eight, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have been, I have lost all things. I consider the garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. Again, he's reiterating that our worthiness is not dependent upon our ability to follow a set of rules in a religion but righteousness comes from, ready for it, verse nine, righteousness comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Paul's saying right here, the ability to be good or right does not come from what we do, but from our faith in Jesus. Being made right with God is never something we earn, but something that comes through faith. Keep reading here, verse 10. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead, that is the goal, the rule, the purpose that we all live our lives for, to know Christ. Man, imagine if the only rule that you had written down was to know Christ, to love Christ. The only thing we ever, ever were evaluated on was our faith in Christ. And I'm not meaning like how well we read our Bible or how well we pray, you know, doing these disciplines well, because you can do all of those things and show up every single church event and serve at every service. And none of that matters. It's all garbage unless our heart is being changed to knowing Jesus. And we don't stop there at just knowing Jesus. The prize we win, the goal we are being called to is not yet, it's just not head knowledge, but heart change identity change. Following Jesus has never been about following the rules, but it's about changing our identity and our hearts to something, to someone that reflects Jesus and how we live. I'm going to read here the last few verses of this chapter. So jump with me to verse 17. Join together in following my examples, brother and sister. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, 
Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ, their destiny, destruction, and God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies that they will be like his glorious bodies. Our citizenship is in heaven. We don't need rules to follow Jesus. We need faith. That's what faith is all about. Faith is not about what you do because of Jesus. Faith is about who you are because of Jesus. Faith is not about following the rules of the religion. Faith is about following your relationship with Jesus. It's about your life being changed by knowing Jesus. We don't need rules to follow Jesus. We need faith. You see, when you have faith, you have your identity not rooted in what a junior high you go to, what sports team you are part of, what, what friend group you are in. Your identity is in our citizenship in heaven. Faith is what you need to have your life changed. It's the only rule you will ever need to follow. You see, when you have faith, you choose to have boundaries in your relationships with people you date. Not for the sake of it being a rule, but because you are choosing to love and value other people. And most importantly, your future spouse. Because loving and valuing others are what you're supposed to do as a Christian. When you have faith, you don't, choose, you, you don't drink alcohol underage uh, or engage with like excessive drunkenness as an adult, not for the sake of it being a rule, but because you're choosing to love and honor God and other people by how you live out your life with integrity and dignity towards others. Because integrity is what you're supposed to be about as a Christian. When you have faith, you choose to not dress in a way that is revealing your body. And, and not for the sake of it being a rule, because you are choosing to respect other people by how you live out your life. Because respecting others is what you're supposed to do as a Christian. Leading our lives from a place of faith changes things. You see, rules take away our choice, but faith empowers us to choose. Let me say that again, don't miss this. Rules take away our choice, but faith empowers us to choose. To choose to love others. To choose to honor God. To choose respect and dignity in the way we live. To choose to live with integrity. We don't need rules to follow Jesus. We need faith. That's all we are ever going to ask of you here, to have faith. Because Jesus accepts everyone, no matter what mess or brokenness that you have gone through, no matter what rules you broke today. None of us are good enough to get to heaven by just following the rules. It all comes back to faith, being our driving force for how we choose to live. Jesus loves you and you belong here. What if we were a community and culture that was known for what we are for, not for what we are against, that lived in a relationship, not in rules? If our relationship was led by our faith instead of fear? So CSM, where do you need to choose to have your faith leading your choices?